I don't know what you've heard about those Shias, but in this video, I intend to clear up any misconceptions that you have about them. Hey Sultan guys, how you all doing? My name is Sayed and if you're new to the channel, I make videos here about life as a British Muslim here in the UK. So if you are into that kind of stuff, then uh, do consider subscribing and uh, make sure you turn on the notification bell as well. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And to all my existing subscribers, welcome back. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about those Shias. Yeah, you know who I mean, those dreaded Shias. Those Shias that are out of the folds of Islam. Those Shias that no one can understand what they're doing. Now, before we get into the video, I want every single person to take note and listen very, very carefully. Everything that I'm going to say in this video is my opinion. It may be right, it may be wrong. And you're actually welcome to your own opinion as well. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment sections down below and what you think of the Shias. You may not like what I'm about to say. And if you don't, that's all well and good, you know, that's your right to disagree with me. But if you are looking to leave a comment in the comment section, which is basically a little bit ridiculous or hateful, then listen, guys, honestly, life is way too short to be hating on each other. You know, it's all about love. And I don't mean to sound like a hippie there. I really don't. Disclaimer, I'm not a sheikh, so I'm not passing no fatwas here, all right? Definitely, uh, guys, watch this video till the end because I've kept my favorite Shia conspiracy theory right to the end. So uh, you don't want to miss on that one. All right, so let's get into it with the first misconception. Ali is Allah. Now, if Ali was Allah, I would have started this video off by saying, Salam wa alikum, insha Ali, masha Ali. Well, no, I didn't. Ali is not Allah. Ali is not Allah by a long shot because that would just simply be shirk to associate somebody else with Allah to do anything like that. No, no Shia in this world believes that Imam Ali is Allah. No, we agree that he is from Allah, like the Holy Prophet, you know, like his progeny, but he ain't Allah. I mean, come on, seriously. Shias don't fast a full 30 days. Man, I wish I knew this sooner, that if we as Shias don't fast a full 30 days, what have I been doing fasting every single day for Ramzan when I don't even like fasting? Come on, Sunni brethren, why did you not tell me this before? Look, the bottom line is, okay, that yes, us Shias do fast every single day for 30 days. And if you want a case in point, I mean, just look at Mashhad, for example. Every single day at the Harams there, they serve iftar. In fact, let's come closer to home. Let's have a look at the, some of the Shia mosques out there. Let's take Stanmore, Hujat, for example, okay? Every single day in Stanmore Mosque, there is iftar for everyone. And we get uh, nearly a thousand people, probably even more, turning up every day to have iftar together. Now, if we didn't fast every day, then what would be the point of having iftar? And if we're just doing it for the sake of food, then surely it should have been done uh, all year round, right? So whatever you've heard about us Shias not fasting, dude, it's totally wrong. Shias pray to a rock. We pray to a rock? No. This is not a rock. This is called a turba. And let me clear something up straight off the bat. We don't prostrate to a rock. We prostrate on a rock. We basically place our foreheads on the rock. Why? Because we have always been taught that we need to prostrate on something that is natural. And a turba is made out of earth. In fact, the Holy Prophet himself used to prostrate on earth. And this can be found in Sayyid al-Bukhari, book number 8, hadith number 49. Check it out. Shias pray to Ali. No, just, just no. Praying to anyone but Allah would make us kafir. Seriously. Even though a lot of Muslims out there always turn around and say, Oh yes, all Shia are kafir, huh? Listen, if I wasn't going to pray to Allah, the only other one that I would pray to would be my wife. And I know a lot of brothers would do the same. Shias don't pray five salah. Again, on the subject of prayers, okay, I've heard this a lot, that you Shias, you don't pray five namaz, you don't pray five salah. Well, guys, we actually do pray five salahs. So we pray all five namaz, but combine Zuhur Asr, Maghrib Isha. Before we get into this, like, but you have to pray five times a day and blah, blah, blah. Stop. Seriously, just stop. Look at the day of Arafah. 
people that are there are also praying three times in that day by combining the two prayers. I have heard, and again, I can't verify this and I can't validate it, so please don't take me word for word on this, but I've also heard that a number of um, our Sunni brethren, depending on what school of uh, thought you are, also say that when you're traveling, you combine your prayers. And I've also heard that the Holy Prophet himself used to combine prayers. Now, think about it. In the modern day and age that we are living in at this moment in time, Combining prayers is actually really, really helpful. For example, before this whole situation occurred in the world where we're all working from home, we all used to work in our offices and wherever it was that we were. And it wasn't always possible for us to take repeated breaks throughout the day to pray our salah. So by combining them allows us to pray one time throughout lunch. So we got our zohar and our asr done in the same time. Granted. It's always better to pray the Salah on time and whenever possible, you should always do that. But when it's not, there is no harm in my humble opinion to combine this. So just before we move any further guys, make sure you subscribe to this video and let me know your thoughts so far as to what your thoughts are on this topic here. Shias have a different Quran. Really? Really? Shias have a different Quran? No way, nah, -uh. no way. You know what? Fine. I challenge anyone out there. I challenge you. I dare you. Pick up a Quran from a Sunni mosque and pick up a Quran from a Shia mosque and compare the two. And word for word, they are going to be exactly the same. We all have the same Quran and I don't care what school of thought you belong to. Shias love Hussein more than the Prophet. Okay, to love the Prophet means to love his family, right? For example, this is Ali. I love Ali as my brother. Because I love Ali as my brother, I automatically love Ali's family. So let's take it back to what this whole topic is about. I love the Prophet. And because I love the Prophet, I love his family. Because they're the family of the Prophet. Not only that, but I also love his family. I love the Imams because of what Imam Hussein did. You know, look at what Imam Hussein did. He not only gave his life, but the life of his family to preserve Islam. The Islam that you and I are able to practice in today's day and age. If it wasn't for Imam Hussein, Salah would not have been preserved. And it doesn't matter again what school of thought you're from, but this is a fact that he gave his life for us, for you, for me. So of course, I am going to love him, not just because he is the family of the Holy Prophet, but because of the sacrifice that he made. Not just Imam Hussein, but the sacrifice that a lot of the Imams made, a lot of the family of the Prophet made. So yes, we love the Prophet as much as we love his family and the Imams. Shias only support Iran. <laughs> now that is the most Donald Trump-esque conspiracy theory that I've ever heard. I mean seriously, who made this up? Donald Trump? Look, not all Shias are from Iran and not all Iranis are Shia, okay? Let's just get that cleared up right now. In the same way, not all Muslims are Arabs and not all Arabs are Muslim. So this, I'm sorry, is just one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my life. Shias hate Sunnis. Just stop right there, all right? Shias do not hate Sunnis. Shias aren't that type of people. I mean, I'm going to give you my example, okay? I am a Shia Sayyid, but actually half of my family is actually Sunni. All my cousins, you know, from my mom's side, they're Sunni. My khalas, my mamus. And do you know something? There has never been any issue between us. Being Shia and Sunni doesn't even come, come close to our relationship because we see each other as human beings, as fellow Muslims. In my experience, you know, I have had some of the best experiences with um, not only my family, but also with a lot of friends of mine that are Sunni. Well, that is apart from one where, uh, in fact, you know what, I'm going to tell you. When I was living in Pakistan, yeah, yeah, I actually lived in Pakistan for four years. Different video, different story for next time. 
But I had a friend of mine who was getting married and, you know, we were we became really good friends and uh, he asked me to be his best man. And I was like, hey, yeah, of course, man. I'd love to be your best man. And um, a couple of weeks passed, you know, and all of a sudden I get a knock on my door. And he's uh, my mate. I'm not going to take his name. Yeah, he's at the door and, uh, you know, I opened up and I was like, bro, come in. He goes, listen, I just want to ask you a question. Are you a Shia? I was like, well, yeah, I, I am. What's, what's the point? Like, why? He goes, bro, I never thought that somebody as educated and sensible as you would become a Shia. I was like, dude, what the f***? Since that day, he never even spoke to me ever again purely because I was a Shia. Well, you know what? Not a problem. You will always get people out there that are idiots, all right? The bottom line is that all of these conspiracy theories about Shias are simply political garbage that are spread to dehumanize and condemn Shias and justify the killing of Shias. We are the ones that are more at threat of being killed by Daesh than any of our Sunni brethren out there. At the end of the day, we are Muslim, okay? Let's stop listening to this political BS, all right? And let's look at each other as human beings. La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. That is your foundation as a Sunni. That is my foundation as a Shia. And even if it isn't, let me leave you with this thought. We are either brothers in faith or we're brothers in humanity. Have a think about that 